All right, Joe, we are back on the podcast where we are training men in spiritual fitness. And I've got a question for you this morning, Joe. Um, what do you think of? What, what, what comes to your mind? What do you picture when you think of a man with a focused mind? And I want to, I'm going to give you a second to think about it. I'll give you my answer. What do, what do I picture when I see a man with a focused mind? I picture like a seminary professor, like in a beautiful library, like a guy in like a, a suit and he's sitting there for some reason, he's smoking a pipe. I don't know why. Maybe that just makes him look <laughs> more sophisticated or something. I, I don't know. But when I begin to think of a man with a focused mind, I've got this, this idea of a, a man who's well-dressed in a library full of books, and he's just a well-studied man. Um, what do you picture? And am I far off from your, your picture? Yeah, I think what pops into my head, and this is not what I'm endorsing, okay? So this is yeah, not yeah. what I'm trying to tell so you guys, you. but... You know, I'm I'm picturing some guy who um is just, you know, headed back from his, you know, lunch break, having, you know, been to the gym and worked out like in the middle of his day. And he's put his uh, you know, his his work, you know, suit on or whatever again. And and now he's sitting at his desk and um, you know, he's already about eight hours into his day and you know, it's one o'clock in the afternoon or something. Um, and you know, just one of these guys that looks looks like everything. Um, is in its place. And like, he's got his hand on the steering wheel and, uh, you know, is just comfortably in control of his life. Again, I think I, I would love to be critical of all of that, but you know, that's what kind of culturally I think just jumps into my head when I, I hear that word focused. Yes. Yeah. And honestly, I guess long story short, when I hear the word focus and think of men of focus and what do they look like? A lot of them don't really look like any of my friends in my mind, at least <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's like, why don't any, any of these look men look real, you know, <laughs> why don't they look like the guys I actually hang out with? And and I think, you know, so we're in a series where we're talking about the disciplines of a focused mind, because we do want men uh, to find that that elusive term focus, and especially when it comes to gospel focus. Um, but we've been just kind of progressively looking at what is it, what does it mean to be focused and how do we guide men down that path? And today I do want us to kind of look at this piece of just, okay, wait, what is it? Uh, what kind of guy am I actually expecting to be? And are we expecting to be this like, uh, you know, this man that's sitting in a cold library full of nothing? Um, because that is often what's pitched to us, right? Is is this the men who know everything and maybe just yeah. sit in the library and do nothing? <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's right. Um, and so I think one of the things we've got to do is just... Um, ask what we mean by focus if we're going to do you know a series on focus and, and guys out there need to, to ask the question because it, going back to like that that image in my mind mm. this is a guy who yeah he is focused undoubtedly but he's focused on himself like yeah you know, it's That's all good. about like him and he's at the very center so he's got crystal clear vision but the center of his interest is this mm. giant idol of self yeah. And yeah. so, you know, this is not, you know, cross training, we're not interested in just, you know, life management or self-actualization or, or whatever, you know, those type um, other uh, ministries or, or uh, you know, models of um, helping people might be. You know, we're talking about focus. We're talking about how does the gospel clarify my vision mm. so that the center of my interest is, you know, Jesus Christ. And that's actually what's propelling me forward in a uh, productive, meaningful direction. And so, you know, it's a, it's a particular focus. It's a focus, you know, that is um, in light of and for the sake of, you know, something a lot more than just me. Yes. All right. So let's recap kind of how we've begun guiding guys towards this kind of focus, this particular kind of focus. Um, a couple of weeks ago, we started with what we'd say is step one in becoming a man with a disciplined mind and um, a, a man of focus. And we said that's memorization, right? That memorization is kind of that first step when you think of the disciplines of a focused mind. Um, maybe just recap quickly what we mean by memorization, why we said that's important. Yeah, it, it was just about the repetition of looking and looking until you actually uh, see something, see something worth observing, see something worth um, deepening your understanding in respects of, and, uh, and just that reality that, you know, usually we don't catch it once. I mean, we all know, you know, our wife throws a couple pillows on the couch and expects us to see it. When we walk in the room. We don't, you know, we've got to look a mm -hmm. hundred times in the room and we still don't see it. And it's the same if we look at a Bible verse. And so memorization, this was just that 
hey, there's something so true and so good that mm -hmm. I'm going to keep looking until finally I see. And typically I need to have to do something like memorization to actually have that kind of close inspection. All right. So just noticing stuff in general. <laughs> it's just yeah. begin to notice stuff. That was yeah. step one. All right. So then step two that we got guys towards was what we called understanding. Give, give just a quick recap of that. Yeah. Again, so this is where, uh, you know, you kind of stumble into something, you know, some word and it's like, oh man, like, okay, Jesus just said eternal life. Mm -hmm. But then rather than just having no understanding, no sense of clarity concerning what this is, that now you're actually looking at it and trying to move from vagueness and move from, in, you know, a lack of comprehension to where you're in this place of actually understanding, mm -hmm. which is still a long way from that truth actually impacting and transforming. But if you don't understand it, you're not even going to have the opportunity to be changed by it. All right. So we we notice stuff and then we clarify stuff. If I could can, can I put it in very simple terms there. Yeah. <laughs> we notice stuff and then we get to clarify stuff. So let's take guys now to the third uh, step. And um, this is what we're calling adhesion um, or, you know, maybe other terms would be like application, but uh, why did you use the word adhesion when we start to talk about this third piece of a discipline, uh, the disciplines of a focused mind? Uh, adhesion, what is it and why did you use that word? Yeah, uh, well, it was to avoid being vague. Um, <laughs> you know, application is, is a word that um, if I stopped a guy and said, okay, tell me, what does it mean? You'd probably struggle. Now there's an old sense. Of, we want to preserve something of the old sense of uh, application. The word apply uh, it used to mean to bring things into contact. And we still talk about that. You know, if you apply a coat of paint or something, yeah. you know, that would make sense. But where you actually you know, make something touch something else. And so, you know, wanted to pull out that sense of adhesion of two things mm -hmm. actually coming into contact. But another way of thinking about it, there's another old word, uh, affection, where people used to talk about, you know, when you understand in such a way that it actually affects, you know, your heart. And then often the, you know, the outcome of that is kind of, you know, things start to change about how you feel and how you see. And so we're talking about with adhesion, this truth that now we understand bringing it into contact with the soul. So it sticks long enough to have the opportunity to affect us and begin to do more. And I think the word adhesion, it has that sense of contact that uh, maybe applications lost. So in some part, what we're doing is, uh, fighting that danger of becoming what I'd call an armchair theologian, right? The, the guy who maybe did clarify stuff, does maybe understand stuff, but uh, it hasn't really stuck to him in such a way that it's changed anything. Is that, is, is that what we're talking about? Yeah. Yeah. Picture that guy, you know, he's, he's having, he's, you know, relishing some debate he's having about the sovereignty of God. You know, you know God is sovereign over all things. Hmm. And, you know, he demolishes his little, you know, his friend and, you know, wins this debate and then steps out of his uh, chair and is full of anxiety, right? Yeah. Because his world is out of control. You know, <laughs> he may win the argument, but the truth has had no impact on his life. And so we've got to get to that place of adhesion where it's actually adhering to us. So now whatever we're professing to believe, mm. it's actually, again, beginning to shape who we are. All right. So I'm attracted. You've convinced me I need adhesion. This, this sounds great. Uh, the obvious question, how do I get it? How do we begin to get to adhesion? You've identified four steps, right? right? Four steps towards adhesion. Give me the first one. Let, let's situate the guy who's listening to this. So again, he's got his Bible open, right? You know, and he's, uh, you know, maybe trying to, to memorize a, a little passage, you know, maybe Psalm 36 about how in your light, we see light, or he's in some verse. And, uh, you know, he's identified some idea and he's mm -hmm. kind of understands it. And again, we're okay. So how is this going to begin to impact my life? The first step, and this sounds really basic. It's really fundamental. The first step is just to own the truth as real. Mm -hmm. Um, if we're totally honest, um, a lot of what we profess to believe, um, has that place in our heart of kind of just that, you know, whatever that, um, Yeti out in the middle of, you know, the abominable snowman out in the middle of, you know, some Arctic wasteland, it, it just bears no relevance yeah. on, uh, on who we are. Yeah. And so, you know, step one is just really say, no, this is real and really owning it as real. And so if I'm, for example, um, you know, reading in my Bible about, uh, the, the indwelling, um, of the Holy spirit, you know, in the body of the Christian or whatever, in first Corinthians six, you know, just you pause for a moment and say, wait a second, you know, so that glory cloud, 
that filled the temple, that scared the dickens out of like the Israelites. Like that presence is in me right now. Like I got to own that as real. And until I own it as real, it's not going to, it's not going to adhere. And so you've got to do this step of really thinking, okay, um, what does it mean to really accept this as truth right now? Yeah. So we, as, as men, we've got to read the Bible, not as a work of fiction and a great work of fiction with great stories and great, yeah. but ask that question. Do I believe this to be true? As the first step in meditation. Do I actually believe what I've just read and uh, maybe clarified? <laughs> do I believe it to be true? So that's all right. That's a good step one uh, for adhesion. What's your second step towards adhesion? Okay. So I think, I think step two is, um, you know, you got to kind of discover the relevance of whatever the truth is. Mm. Um, and, and here, you know, this is before even we're thinking about the implication for ourselves, um, just to pause. And so, you know, again, maybe you've been thinking about light in your light. You, we see light and you've been thinking about the Holy spirit and you've been thinking about the way, um, that we're dependent upon the, the Holy spirit. Um, second Corinthians four about the God who spoke light into darkness. You know, he's the one who gives us the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus mm. Christ. So you're thinking about this way that the the Holy Spirit gives light. Well, what are the what what's the relevance of that truth that there's a kind of light that we need to be able to see with? Mm. Well, you know, if you just stop and start thinking, okay, well, that means that by myself I can't see anything. Um, I might as well live in a cave. You know, there's no light. So um, I'm dependent upon the Holy Spirit to be able to acknowledge any kind of truth. Um, you know, you might be thinking about, okay, well. What is it that, in a sense, hinders that light from uh, illuminating? Well, sin. Okay, so you know this. I, ca I can't live in the darkness and be in the light simultaneously. That um, you know, to enjoy the light of the spirit's going to be coming out of my darkness. Um, you know, what you need to do is you you take the truth and again you think, okay, well, what difference does this make in the world? What difference does it make in the lives of believers? And you actually show, you know, you bring it down to ground level and make it uh, something that's impactful for whoever it is that needs to contemplate that. So, I mean, this is where there's nothing wrong with taking a piece of paper yeah. and, um, you know, I, again, uh, actually doing a little bit mind mapping and thinking yeah. about um, all the ways in which, you know, different things are connected um, and can land potentially in your life. So again, work hard to find the relevance of the truth that you're studying. Hmm. Yeah. So it reminds me of a great question. One of my favorite questions while I'm meditating on scripture, I, I I think I stole it from Tim Keller. I mean, it sounds smart, so it's probably Tim Keller's. Uh, but I use this after I'm uh, reading something. Just if I believed this to be true, how would that change things? I think it's such a great way to yeah get to the, towards the step of adhesion. If I believed this to be true, how would it actually change things both in my life and in the world around me and how I believe things I actually operate? And, and so, yeah, asking questions like that get us closer towards uh, not just clarifying the truth, not just seeing, but actually, okay, having it adhere to our hearts and change us. So, all right, that was the second step towards adhesion. Give us the third now step towards adhesion. Okay, so it's very similar to that second one, but it maybe just inches it forward. Hmm. But I think that the third step is is whatever you, wherever that relevance is, now you have to take it and now you got to apply it to yourself. And again, think of it, making it stick to your own person. Hmm. So, um, yeah. again, you're thinking about the Holy Spirit. Um, you're in John 16, and you're, Jesus is telling us that he's going to send this helper who's going to uh, glorify him. He's going to take the things that are mine, declare them to you. Mm -hmm. And so now all of a sudden, okay, this is the situation I'm in right now. That um, what the Holy Spirit does is um, make Christ great. Doesn't just give information but reveals Christ in such a way is glorious, you know, that actually it touches the depths of my heart. So right now, you know, I need to apply this to myself. What the Holy Spirit wants to do in my life right now is make Christ magnificent. Okay. Well, you know, it's time to go ahead and ask the Holy Spirit to do this, right? Mm. Um, it's time that now I've got my Bible in front of me. Now I know what God wants to show me. It, he wants to show me more of Jesus. It's, you know, it's taking all of these points of relevance and actually right now letting it land into your life. And like you said, how, what would I do right now if this was true? Yeah. You know, yeah. stepping into that with your own person in this moment and making it the truth that you're standing on presently. Mm. 
I remember uh, sitting in a coffee shop with a buddy a couple of years ago, and we were talking about, it was the beginning of the year, so we were kind of talking about what our devotional plans for the year were, and and how, how was it going, that kind of thing. And um, at that time, I was uh, doing a, a daily Bible reading plan, and my habit was to take a, um, just like one of those sticky pads, the little notepads, and every day after I read, I would just write two words. God is, and then I'd have to fill in that blank with something about what I just read that told me about God. So God is whatever. My my goal was, man, I just want to understand more about God. I want to dig into the scripture and say, get clarity on the character of God through reading it. And I asked my buddy what he was doing. He was doing something similar, but uh, but different in, a, in a, I think, a unique way. He said he was journaling every day with two d- different words. He said every day he was reading and writing the words, I will and then filling that blank in and say, okay, now that I've read something about who God is, am I going to do anything about it? Does it mean anything to me? Is there any sort of implications for my life? And I think that those two um, together are, yeah, what will get guys towards adhesion. Who is God? Is there anything in here that I'm digging through and understanding? But now, okay, what am I going to do about it? What, What does it actually mean in my life? What are the implications for how I will think and live? So, okay, it's getting us closer to adhesion last, but you have one more step, fourth step towards adhesion. And you know, I think, I think you're there. I think, and let, let's go back to that, that meaning of ad, when something adheres well, you know, it, it stays stuck onto something else, yeah. you know, um, you don't want the sole of your shoe to fall off, you know, because it's not attached well. Um, and we all know, again, we all know that you can have that moment, you know, you're in your quiet time, you know, you do, you feel close to God, you know, maybe you have that moment, your heart kind of swells a little bit and you feel like, man, he, he, God is holy. Um, but you know, you step out the door and it's like stepping out into a whole different universe. And, um, you know, it doesn't take long before you, you lose your temper or, you know, you're, you're flooded with worries, whatever it is. And what we need with adherence is, you know, we actually want that truth to stick with us, you know, through our day. Mm. And that's where, like we talked about, that's where we got to be a little bit strategic um, about actually going out in that fourth step, living according to this truth. Mm. And I mean, if we just go back, think of what um, Moses was telling the Israelites you know, write these things on your forehead, you know, put them on your hands. Like as soon as you step out and, you know, stop listening to me preaching to you, you're going to forget about all of this stuff. doesn't matter what you saw at the Red Sea. You're going to forget about it. And so, you know, put it on your doorpost, remind yourself. So you actually begin to to learn to live this way. And, um, and, you know, Leviticus and Deuteronomy is full of little habits and little rituals and little things to train the mind and just to make holiness present in a world that doesn't always look like that's how um, it's set up. And so, I mean, I think what we've got to do is, yeah, go figure out how to then make some sort of environment where we're reminded Mm -hmm. and we can actually live out whatever that truth is that we want to adhere Mm -hmm. to our soul such that it really affects us in a lasting way. That's good. I um, I mean, there's a a question I like to ask myself uh, like a week after I have memorized a verse and it's really painful. I've got to be honest, but it gets at this point of adhesion. I think that you're talking about. Um, and let's say I memorized something in Colossians three. I'll ask a week later, what difference did it make? You know, it's looking back. Did anything actually change? Am I okay? Let me, man. I just memorized a verse on anxiety, and let's say a week later, I need to ask, what difference did it make? Uh, it's easy for us to sit in the moment and say, if I believe this, this will make this kind of difference in my life. Um, but we've got to take time to reflect back and say, did it actually make a difference? Had it, has it actually adhered is basically what we're asking. Has this truth of who God is and what he says and, and what I say, I believe about it. Has it actually adhered to my heart and to my actions? And if not, okay, I need to go back and revisit it. I need to go back to those steps of understanding and memorizing and, and getting this to actually adhere till it actually begins to make a difference. And I can look back and say, Oh, it did make a difference than we- this week. It did make a difference in these ways. I have tangible ways that I've seen that God's word has made a difference in the way I think, uh, the way I act, and all of that. Um, all right, so now, now I'm going to put you a, a little bit on the spot because I want you, you did so good last week with like workshopping this and kind of walking through what it looks like to understand a passage of scripture. Can you do the same for adhesion? Can you workshop maybe a, a passage of scripture and show us what it looks like to get, get towards adhesion and through it? Yeah, let's give it a go. Um, and again, guys, uh, this is you know just imagining that that you know we're having a 
a time, a devotional together, you know, what would it look like to actually uh, try to uh, get moved toward this adhesion? And last week we were in John 17. And so we can just go back there, maybe to a different section. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, imagine you're, you're reading along and, uh, you know, you get to verse 23 and you start reading about um, Jesus saying that I am in them and you are in me, that they may be perfectly one. So that the world may know that you sent me and love them even as you loved me. Father, I desire that those whom you have given me may be with me where I am to see my glory that you have given me. And maybe just stop at that last bit, to mm-hmm. see my glory that you have given me. I desire that they might see my glory. And you're thinking about this. And, you know, all of a sudden you realize that that this is what Jesus wants, mm-hmm. that Jesus wants us to actually know him and all of the glory that he had before the world was that he has in you know the the presence of the the father right now and so you know if you just stop and now you're thinking okay well what's the relevance of this and you know you start to think about all of the things around you that that um, are presented and advertised as having really great weight and substance Mm -hmm. and you know you're thinking what are the things that that you're most excited by? What are the things that, man, I wish I was at that concert. I wish I was at that game. I wish I had, you know, that office. I wish I had that promotion. I wish I had that degree. All of these things that, man, that would be glorious. And uh, you're starting to realize that actually, no, that there's this competition that that actually what the spirit wants to do is for you to see this real glory revealed in Jesus. Mm. And so, you know, if there's this prayer that Jesus is praying for, you prayed it there, he's praying for it right now. He wants you to see his glory. Well, this is that opportunity right now to actually, you know, uh, have this moment where this truth you apply to yourself. I mean, how can you read this and not maybe move into a space of first, you know, trying to take inventory and confess the stuff that's stolen your worship? Mm-hmm. But equally, you know, when's the last time you've really asked, okay, Jesus, I'm ready for a greater vision. You know, mm-hmm. I want a greater vision. How do I see more of you? Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, if you want to see more of his glory, you could then ask that question, well, where are the places that Jesus is going to show it to me? How do I see more of it? Um, and maybe, you know, you think, okay, well, there's a, a specific passage, you know, that again, that you want to memorize. And so, you know, you write it down, you take it with you, you, you figure out a time throughout your day that you're going to be thinking about this. But, you know, that just that idea, okay, there's Christ praying for us that we would know his glory and see it. Okay, how do I make that prayer, you know, actually adhere such that this becomes the driving motive that I'm actually seeking in my life? Mm. You know, something like that. We're trying to move this into the space of reality to where it's actually going to make a difference in our day right now. That's that's great. You're you're great at this, Joe. It's almost like, yeah, you you've actually done this before. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> that's that's yeah. super helpful. I hope other guys found that helpful. I love seeing that in action because that, yeah, that that makes this real to me is something I can actually put into practice in my uh daily life. So uh, just to kind of recap for guys, what, what we want you to do to begin to get a focused mind, uh, notice stuff clarify stuff and then fix that stuff to your heart. It's a, I mean, that's really, really a very oversimplified version of what we're talking about here. But I do hope guys, you will begin to go out this week. And as you read, notice that really be use that practice of memorization to really notice what's actually being said there, then clarify it, get rid of the vagueness and then find ways to fix that stuff to your heart and uh, begin to see changes. Um, But y'all join us next week because we're going to continue doing this, continue talking about the disciplines of a focused mind in a way, not just the focus in the way that the world talks about it, but we want minds that are focused and centered on the gospel and what does that look like played out in the life of a man. So y'all join us again next week.